Welcome back to Markets Today. We are joined by Elizabeth Nkuku. She is the Chief Investment Officer at Saiten Asset Management. Welcome to the show, Elizabeth. Thank you, Peter. We're discussing the report that was published earlier in the week by your investment house. And this was looking at the trends in fixed income, equities, as well as real estate. You can walk us through kindly through the key highlights of this particular report. Thank you, Peter. Um, so basically what happens is that uh, we look at the trending topics in the market and uh, just to update the investors in one nutshell, what is going on, what should they be doing uh, from our perspective, and then they make the decision. So basically what happened this particular week, we thought uh, what made sense is for, for us to look at the currency and interest rates because that is what, um, in terms of uh, the changes that we have seen there and what can investors be doing. So from our perspective, we looked at the currency and said, this is where we think the currency is going. And from the interest rates, this is what the trend that we expect. So as an investor, what should you be taking? Uh, what, what positions should you be taking in that, uh, in that event? On currency, what is your outlook? What is happening and what should we be looking out for in the short to the medium term? The currency has remained relatively stable over the last uh, five years. But um, what we saw um, in uh, when, when the COVID situation happened is that there was a depreciation all the way to a low of 107. Um, so after that, it, there's been a lot of stability, relative stability. What uh, The reason why maybe the depreciation happened is that most people uh, just went and bought the dollar, especially uh, if you, uh, you, you expect uh, you're, a, you're an importer you expect that you will be using the dollars. So what happens is for you to pile up that basic demand and supply. So that led to a depreciation of the shilling. So we, what we have actually seen now is some bit of stability driven by the fact that uh, central bank has come in to calm the market by just um, supplying the dollars in the market. That has hindered, has actually yeah, impacted the forex reserves and we have actually the forex, seen the forex reserves decline quite a bit from what we have seen. So going forward, our expectation is that the currency would um, continue to depreciate slightly, but I think um, central bank is really on, on top of it in terms of just coming in to support the shilling when they have to. Okay, fair enough. And in terms of triggers, are there any key um, pointers that you're looking out for to give a sense of direction of where the currency could end up in maybe three or six months? If you look at usually what happens during this particular month, especially May to June, there's a lot of dividend payments that usually happen, and uh, that usually have uh, usually causes some a bit of uh, depreciation of the shilling. So that could be one of them. Then um, we are lucky in the sense that the oil prices have come down, and so the import bill has actually maybe reduced. So uh, the demand for the currency has come down slightly. So that that kind of balances it out. But for me, when I look at uh, what uh, has supported the shilling in the past has been central bank activity. So a decline in the forex reserves to uh, below four months of import cover will be a significant uh, issue for us. But I think central bank, uh, the IMF has come in and provided some cash to support. And even in the past, they've actually provided some facilities that, that central bank can always tap into it. So I feel like we're in a position whereby the, um, the monetary policy uh, arm will always continue to support the currency. And do you see this support strengthening the shilling back to 102, 101, 100, or is 106, 107 the new normal? I, I think from a technical perspective, you cannot, I, I think from my perspective, technical, uh, technical performance cannot really support uh, the shilling. The shilling has to be fundamentally supported. So I don't see us going back to the 100 shilling levels just because um, there has to be something that is coming to support the shilling. So if you look at the fundamentals of the shilling, the economy is not going to do well. We are still going to be importers. Uh, our exports are not going to do well. So I don't see why the shilling, the, any support to the shilling to the, to the appreciation. So I see like the 106, 108 level is our new norm unless something else really drastic happens. 
And my final question on currency. We have looked at other African currency and the one that really stands out is the Nigerian currency. They are been taking a huge hit because of the nature of their economy. We did see a devaluation by the government there, rather the central bank equivalent in the month of March. And it's impossible for foreign investors to take their money out. Is there any correlation? Is there any read through from what's happening in Nigeria vis-a-vis -vis the case of Kenya? Seems like the Nigerians might have heard me talking about the devaluation of currency. I don't know, Elizabeth, can you still hear me? Just a relax on that. So I don't see uh, as from the top, your, your sense of whether there's any read through from uh, for foreign investors in Kenya in light of what's happening in Nigeria? When you look at the Kenyan economy, it's really diverse. And uh, our largest um, sort of economy is the agricultural sector, which is only about 20 to 24%, of which uh, even that, the bulk of it is not on the Nigeria, they largely depend on oil in terms of uh, exports uh, for them. So our economy is completely different from Nigeria, and I don't see uh, a significant issue in the Kenyan economy like we have seen in the Nigerian market. Fair enough. Thank you so much for that overview of the currency. Let's get into the part of uh, your outlook on interest rates. What are your thoughts and what are the drivers for these thoughts? In terms of interest rates, um, when you look at what has happened so far, yes, there has been a shift in the yield curve. By uh, The yield curve has shifted up, but really, really slightly compared to what maybe you would have seen um, if it was previous times. The treasury bills have remained relatively stable and uh, the long end of the yield curve is increasing, but really, really a uh, little sort of correction. So in my view, if you look at um, what really drives uh, interest rates is really, again, the demand for money from the from the central bank, uh, from the government and the central bank as the agent. So the central bank has been able to sort of um, hold the rates together by rejecting uh, expensive bids. Initially, that was because of the, there was also a lot of money in the market because uh, the banks were not lending. So we are we then there was the journey of the CBR being revised and the cap being uh, being repelled. That meant that uh, people would be able to borrow. But now again, COVID has happened. Even if the banks wanted to lend to the to Monainchi and the SMEs, the risk has increased. So it it might mean that the gains that have been achieved actually are going to be unwound slightly. So what that this means is that there's still a lot of money that goes to, uh, to the government uh, securities. So there are two things. There's the demand for money by the government is still high, but I think there's liquidity for that uh, for the from the banking sector. The only challenge is that now we have seen Moody's come down and actually downgrade some banks because of the exposure. But that does I don't think as a country we are at a point where we are going to default on our loans. So in, the, in as much as there has been a downgrade, I don't see a significant issue arising from that. So interest rates will increase slightly. However, we shall not see significant uh, jumps like we saw uh, T-bill going all the way to 18%. So I, I would say maybe 1% percentage increment at the very worst. Just sticking to that conversation of what the central bank is doing in terms of being um, the playing the role of accumulating funds for the government of operations. Last week, we did see the five-year open. And for once, the central bank was very um, acted in a very different way. It said, let's roll over the T-bills and roll this into the five-year bond. And there has been proposals and sentiments coming through Treasury and the Retirement Benefits Authority in line with let us defer interest rate payments for a little while just because of COVID and what's happening and the pressure on the fiscal side. How do we look at this and what happened last week and what is your read through in terms of the expectations in the future? So, first of all, I think the discussion on with the Retirement Benefit Authority that they, we don't pay coupons, in my view, I think it was completely preliminary and I don't see that happening because that then is, it's, it's almost like a default. I don't think the government is willing to go to that route. Go that route. And 
if the government comes to the market to raise funds they will always get the funds because there is liquidity in the market so first of all i don't think there's going to be a, a movement to towards that uh the, that because that is turn out to a default so that is not going to happen what is going to happen is there'll be money being rolled over there's quite a bit of maturities between this month and next month and what uh, what i expect is that um the government should try and lengthen their duration so by just maturing some of the tables and uh, taking that money longer we saw that uh, some years back that they were trying to do that a lot but in the last two to three years i think there has been a bias towards treasury bills just maybe just because of the nature of what is happening going forward i think there will be they have to make uh, the long term more attractive so that people can move money to that to that end so the five year i think is a good bet and also the infrastructure bond with an average uh, year um type to maturity of two years i actually expect the investors to take a bet on that so then you're advising investors to do the ifb which has two years to maturity and the five-year bond yes because at this particular point you're really not so sure 100 percent sure about the interest uh the interest rate environment so it's good to play um low to medium term duration you don't want to be too long and just in case you get underwater if the the, the yield curve goes up and for this two papers, do you have indicative interest rates that investors should be able to put their bids in at? I think um, dip, uh, looking at where they are trading, I would say anything between 11.5 to 12.5. So an average of like 12 percent. Yeah. Percent. And now that we are getting slowly out of the COVID pandemic and we are beginning to accept the new normal, there suddenly is an impact on the finances at a government level as well as at a private sector level. Where are you telling your investors to put money? Are you telling them to look at fixed, um, uh, fixed interest assets such as the government bonds, or are you telling them to look at equities and be opportunistic? The asset, the asset allocation decision, uh, I would, I would took, it's really um, very portfolio specific and very individual specific. If you look at the stock market, the prices are really low. So for long-term investors, you have an, an average uh, time investment horizon of like five years. My bet is like it's you're you better off in the stock market because you'll make really good returns when you when you see banks trading at um, sub one 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 times book. I think it's a time to jump in and just take the stocks. But at the same time, if you are really a short-term investor, one year, two years, I I feel like. Um, we should be able to you should be looking at the fixed income securities because you'll be able to preserve your value but right now the bias is towards more risky assets but um if you have a long-term view we take a short break elizabeth we will be back just to finish the the remainder of the report see you in a few <laughs> 